I'm reminded here whether it's Maloney or so many other uh, people who are now coming forward to talk about globalism, corporatists. We got a real taste of what is global government during the pandemic. I, I think it more than at any other time, probably ever, I mean, certainly in living memory, where there was this collaboration of corporations, governments, and the global medical elites, who, by the way, abject failures, abject yes. failures, not just Fauci, all the people who went along with Fauci, all of it. They told everybody what to do. They made everybody and used the force of this state to do it. Forty-two days, count them, until Election Day, November 8th, my friends. It is coming quickly, and it is going to be a sprint to the finish. We've got a lot on the latest polling in the critical races. What indicators are we seeing? Some very encouraging signs for the GOP. Let's just hope they can focus in, not get distracted by nonsense. And always remember, you got to leave a little room for Democrat shenanigans in the last few weeks here, too. Democrat malarkey all over the place. Um, Joe Biden talking about the economy. I, I, Clay and I will give you our sense of everyone that I know and talk to about what they're doing with their money. It's, you know, stuff it in the mattress time for a lot of people, it's, right? It's a scary time right now, I think, for a lot. Yeah, I mean, people I know are pulling money. Anything that's super risky, any or not even super risky, just anything that they feel like, you know, could really get hit even more. Uh, so there's a real sense. And with the housing market heading into some very rough waters, things are going to be tough. Joe Biden's telling everybody, though, things are great. Uh, there was a an FBI raid of a pro-life activist house over the weekend in Bucks County, Pennsylvania, that got a lot of attention. Uh, Mark Houck, who is the founder and president of the King's Men, a lot of folks looking at this and saying, why was a father and pro-life activist uh, woke, uh, woken up by a effectively a Justice Department SWAT raid in the morning over the weekend? When you hear the story, you're going to realize DOJ is uh, absolutely politicized, especially on any issues having to do with abortion the last weeks here of the election. Plus a very interesting, speaking of elections, Clay, do you see what's going on in, in Italy where yeah. this is, it's fascinating because I had no idea that God, family, and country in Italian translates to evil fascist who is just like Mussolini. That, hold on a second, I, I didn't know. So you have this, the first female prime minister of Italy, or yeah, prime minister, right? Not president. Um, That's right. And... That's always a tough one for us Americans. We're like prime minister, president. Who's the uh, important one? Georgia Maloney has become uh, Italy's new prime minister. And look, I, we don't spend a ton of time in foreign politics here. Every country's got their own specifics. But people do see at this point in time some clear comparisons, some similarities, Clay, I think, between an Italy that has a tremendous amount of illegal immigration. Theirs comes particularly from North Africa. Uh, an Italy that is increasingly feeling like it's corporatist and run. I mean, this is from Maloney's speech. He says we're effectively all treated like we're just consumers with no family, no God and no future other than to consume and to do what the corporates tell us to do. People see this. They're saying, hey, first of all, not a lot of glass ceiling shattering for the first female prime minister. When you look at what's going on here and the way they cover it in this country. Clay, people want to be a part of something more than just buy what we tell you to buy, get the shots we tell you to shot uh, to get, and shut your mouth. I, I think this is also a part of a tremendous global repudiation of the leadership that many of our countries dealt with during COVID. And you'll remember that Italy was one of the most draconian COVID-restricting countries out there. And I really do believe that there is a desperate yearning for a new breath of freedom all around the world, and that the people who are in control, the so-called experts and elites, uh, what I would just say is Dr. Fauci is a perfect stand-in of that community, are overwhelmingly being rejected right now across the country, Buck. Uh, just as an example, I don't know if you saw this from Alex Berenson, uh, but, but I thought it jumped out uh, to me 
about we've talked about the the parents rejecting the COVID shots for their kids and even how some of the media is having to start to cover it. But also even the people who were all in on the boosters, just two percent. This is from Berenson this morning, Buck. Two percent of young kids are fully COVID vaccinated. That means ninety-eight percent of kids, young kids, these are kids six months to five years old, parents are saying no. Uh, 49 out of 50 are saying no. I mean, that, that that's an overwhelming number. And only 2% of eligible ad- adults are getting the new COVID booster so far. Uh, now, I know there's a lot of people probably out there listening to us right now, Buck, who maybe trusted the government and got that first couple of shots. Maybe you even got your first booster what we're seeing, I think, is while people might not be saying it publicly, they're voting with their feet, and they are rejecting this Biden, Fauci, uh, sort of collective grasp on all of their freedoms. And I think as we sit here, what are we, 43 days officially out? I think tomorrow yeah. will be six weeks uh, until the midterm. The rising tide is coming. I, I am I am feeling the beginnings of a, of a substantial red wave. Right. I'm, I'm optimistic, but in a way where we have to keep pushing because, as we've said along, you must run up the scoreboard. Close, close run so victory here, not good enough. It has to be an absolute uh, butt kicking. And and on the the point, it's an excellent one, by the way, about what Italy Italy went completely insane during COVID as yes. a country. Went completely and they, nuts. You, constantly, Almost, you remember this, Buck. Everybody said, "Oh, the United States is going to be the next Italy." You remember right. this when well, you well, would say anything. Italy was the country where we saw what was going on, particularly in northern Italy, and everybody was thinking, "Oh my gosh, this is the modern Panic. plague. This is going to be like the 1918 influenza pandemic. All of that, right?" It really started with those images out of nor- out of northern Italy, and then Italy went to extremes, almost Australia level. The only thing is Italy's not an island, right? So it wasn't right. able to isolate itself quite the same way. But I- I'm reminded here, whether it's Maloney or so many other uh, people who are now coming forward to talk about globalism, corporatists, we got a real taste of what is global government during the pandemic. I, I think it more than at any other time, probably ever, I mean, certainly in living memory, where there was this collaboration of corporations, governments, and the global medical elites, who, by the way, abject failures, abject failures, not just Fauci, all the people who went along with Fauci, all of it. They told everybody what to do. They made everybody and used the force of this state to do it. They enriched the pharma companies that were making these shots that were Now we see almost worthless. I mean, they've turned certainly to this point to be almost worthless at this phase. Um, And yes, there should be a reckoning. I mean, remember that the quote uh, from Pat. You love Patton, right? One of the great. I love him. One of the great uh, wartime movies or war movies of all time. 30 years from now, when you're sitting around your fireside with your grandson on your knee and he asks you, what did he do in the great World War Two? You won't have to say, well, I shoveled stuff in Louisiana, you know. (laughs) Meaning it was a real it's a real moment, right? It was a real call up moment. The covid pandemic for government, for the elites, for corporations was a moment in history that everybody should remember and should remember for decades to come because it showed you how far down the pathway of tyranny we can be taken by people who claim to be experts and have nothing but the best intentions. And where were people like Maloney? I'll say this. Maloney of Italy, big opponent of lockdowns, big opponent of mandatory vaccinations. She she was right on those issues, and the Italian people rewarded her. I think there should be a parallel in this country on those issues. I I agree with you, and I also don't think we can underrate, to your point, the patent analogy is a great one. There are a lot of people who desperately want to believe that they were on the right side of history for COVID, and they ended up being on the wrong side of history. They want to live in these crucible moments in time that matter so much so they can Instagram uh, their existence into, you know, putting up a Ukraine flag or putting themselves up with a picture of the mask. I mean, all of these things are about social sort of uh, platforming of yourself, the virtue signaling, and they got it all wrong. And 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 I'm writing, you know, on my new book now, Buck, because uh, I'm a history nerd like you are, I was a history major in college, and the biggest, one of the biggest fallacies has been out there for the entire Trump era is this concept of right and wrong side of history, because increasingly, as you break it down, the left is wrong on everything uh, about 
their historical resonance. And I mean, just think about this for a minute. All these people who told you, hey, you have to go get the COVID shot. Hey, you have to go lock yourself in your house. Hey, your kids can't be in school. They're now wrong on everything. And I'm I'm genuinely curious because they're, they're basically pretending that the, the COVID shot still works, but the numbers out there reflect that even the people who are saying it publicly, Buck, when 98% of parents are not getting the COVID shot for their kids, look, it ain't 98% of Republicans out there, right? I mean, look, we're not winning elections 98 to 2. There are millions of people now. Now, now I understand they're, and they're libs, and they think they're really smart, but there are millions of people, including parents, unfortunately, who not only masked up their own children, but demanded yes. that other children be masked, not only made their own children get shots they didn't need, but demanded that other children get shots, That's that right. supported the politicians and the policies that did all this stuff. When it comes to kids, we, we got on with COVID, the apparatus got everything wrong. They got literally yep. not a single thing right when it came to kids. And, and that's why, I mean, I do think people have been pointing out, because I keep saying, you know, in, the economy, which is inflation too, right? I mean, inflation is the biggest driver of the pain we're seeing. But the economy, immigration, crime, people keep saying schools. And they yeah. throw that in at the end. And I say, you know what? There's some real resonance there because the destruction of children's futures that occurred because of the learning loss and the kids, especially the kids with speech impediments. And I keep saying, and I had a speech impediment as a kid. That's really hard on your psychology. When you're trying to communicate with your peers and with adults and people make fun of you really harmful to them to have to be masked up and have other people be masked during the pandemic. All of it's not like there was a trade-off made clay. That was the, one of the fundamental lies about this. Okay, fine. There's some downside, but there's so much upside. We're willing to do it. It was all downside. And that's the part that I think even a lot of parents who went along with this stuff, they just psychologically can't handle that right now. But a lot of those people, I think Buck are listening to us. I think they found a lot of them did during found us during COVID and they're like, Oh, these guys are not again. That's why I like the tagline that we use sanity in a time of insanity. When 98% of parents of young children are not getting them the double COVID shots. And when only around 2% of people that might've even already gotten three or four shots are finally saying, yeah, I'm not willing to go get the fourth shot. They're not saying publicly what their actions are reflecting. But I do think they are responsive when you make those arguments. And I think we have to say, Buck, look, we welcome you. If you initially bought in and you thought, hey, I should go get these double COVID shots. Hey, I should get a booster. I'm going to trust my government. And now you're looking at the data and you're starting to recognize that you were sold a bill of goods. Open up your eyes on other issues, too, because it's not just COVID. Look, I, I, the, one, the one part of this where I'll say I got it wrong, I knew masks were bullcrap essentially day one like i knew this was a total joke all along lockdowns senseless crazy we're all just going to eventually get to herd immunity the only place where i have to go back and say oh, i got that one a little wrong. i thought the first round of vaccination would be more effective than it ended up being for I for those at did. risk i was like I look they're did. telling us 95 percent effective they can't be i know they're wrong a lot but they can't be that wrong and they were and you that's and I were texting a learning. and talking about this privately before we even said it on the radio because we were like, if you start to look at this data, and I remember you saying like, they can't be this wrong, yes, right? Like they that's can't what I kept have saying. I'm like, totally, they can't be I mean, that in your head, wrong. I mean, I think that's rational. And they were. I think that's rational. I think that's a lot of people listening to us right now who bought in initially. Look, we're going to try to be honest with you. We're not going to get everything right. But again, last year when we were having Alex Berenson on, I was like, man, I, I trust that he's right. But I was like, man, this is kind of controversial stuff to be saying that the COVID shots are not going to work because at the time we were being told they were a medical miracle and they were going to end COVID forever. And there's something about, and this goes to what we saw, I think, with the rise of Georgia Maloney in Italy. Also, by the way, Sweden just elected a... Yes. I, I hate that. It was just from far right. I mean, do they mean... Do they mean right? Rational, you know, like, reasonable. What, what does that really yeah. mean, right? Anytime yeah. you have a, a, a group that is elected in Europe by an entire... Very sophisticated, uh, you know, highly literate country or by a plurality or majority, whatever it may be. And the media says they're a fascist. You should start asking questions like, are, are they really fascist? Is that really true? Because how about I mean, Buck, USA Today called me a right wing extremist, a right wing Clay, extremist. I'm still jealous. All right. We need to stop. <laughs> it's unfair. 
I've yet, you know, you, you Google me, I think it just says right wing. I don't get the extremist tag, but I'm working on it. 